Awesome. Well, thank you for those of you who probably know. My name is Michaela, and we are going to be diving in today to all things culture. It's that uh, word that we all kind of think we know what we're maybe meaning, uh, maybe don't know what we mean. Um, but it's one of those uh, vague, I would say, leadership terms that, again, we got to figure out, are we all talking about the same thing? How do we get on the same page? What does that look like? And so with this word culture, um, it's so much of it I find is like a feeling, right? You know, and you can probably think back on teams you've been a part of that the culture is good and it's thriving and it feels good, right? We know when we have it and we quickly know when we don't have it, when things aren't flowing, when we're frustrated, when there's maybe a toxic team member. I know not, none of us have ever had that, um, but they're out there somewhere. And so, you know, what do we do to be highly intentional to create the kind of team culture atmosphere that we want to show up, right? And go to work and get excited about work because I define leadership as simply intentional influence. So how much more if we have a whole bunch of leaders within our team who are intentionally you know, influencing the culture? So right off the bat, before we dive into any uh, nitty gritty meaty details around culture, I like to lead with a lot of questions, a lot of thinking on your end. Uh, so hopefully you've had your afternoon coffee here. But the first question, I want you to think about is what is the best best experience you've had at work in the last, we'll say, month? So think about what were you doing? Um, who were you with? Like if, if some person on the street just came up to you and said, hey, tell me about your work. What was the best experience you've had in the past month? Um, what would it be? Okay, so I'll give you kind of 30 seconds to think about what was the, the best experience you've had? What were you doing? Who are you with? Uh, what, what did you kind of, uh, how long was the encounter? Um, okay, so think about that for a second. And as well, you can, if you need to go back further, you can think about what was the best experience you've had work-wise in three months, six months. Can you think of, can you think of a couple and who were you with? What were you doing? What were you talking about? Were there problems that you were solving? And then once you have that, hopefully it can come to mind somewhat quickly. Uh, hope, once you have that, I want you to think about within that experience, what were the top two strongest emotions that you felt either during it or as you walked away? What were, what kind of came to light for you? Was it joy, happiness, uh, a sense of empowerment, maybe gratefulness? Okay. And then once you have that, go a bit deeper and I want you to think about what thoughts were you thinking during or after that experience? So even as you think about it, what thoughts come to mind? Like it could be, man, I love working here. Oh man. I'm so grateful for my boss. Wow, what a united team we have. Um, was there something that kind of, even as you thought about it just now, what, what thoughts in your head came to mind? And then lastly, the last question is were there any key results that came from this experience? Maybe there was more productivity, some specific action steps. Were there any kind of concrete 
actions, results, positive, you know, po pro pro I would hope positive that came out of this time. And maybe it was even just your own um, sense of kind of like a stronger morale for the team, a, a kind of sense to, to push a little harder. What were the results or outcomes, if any, kind of in in light of this experience, if that makes sense? And for those of you who popped on a little late, um, we are just thinking about the the best experience you've had at work in the past couple months. Can you define it um, and kind of unpacking it a little bit? And at, if at any point anybody has any questions, throw them in the chat and I'll try to try to see them. Um, but can, can I get any takers to share uh, their experience? Um, will kind of take us through your your answers to some of these questions. Um, anybody willing to be so brave? I'll go. We're all uh, okay. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks. Okay. Um, the best experience that I have in the last month. Um, I have decided to come up with. I work in social services. And we have decided to come up with the concept of um, hosting some resource fairs statewide throughout the state of South Carolina. And I partnered with um, our workforce consultants, which is another unit within our, our division. And mm -hmm. um, the goal of these resource fairs, resource fairs were, was not only to provide resources for our program participants, but also to um, assist our staff with becoming more aware of the resources that are available within their areas. And to also just build collaboration and teamwork within the team. Um, yeah. So that's who I was with. I was with the workforce, some of the workforce consultants. And what we were doing was yeah. we were planning this job fair. And I think that uh, the two strongest emotions that I walked away from that meeting with was excitement. Um, not only excitement mm -hmm. about the event, but excitement at the fact that um, the collaboration was growing, that the seed was planted and right. that we would, it looked like we were going to be moving into uh, a, a better direction. Mm -hmm. um, and the thoughts that I was thinking after, um, I had a sense of accomplishment and I had a sense of hope. And the key awesome. results were, um, you know, we were able to kind of put things in place to get our first uh, resource fair um, going in the Trident area, I'm sorry, in the low country. And um, sure. it just was a very positive positive meeting so more so what we actually did and planned I think this the greatest sense that I got was just from the excitement of the collaboration yeah awesome great example well good 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 anybody else want to share quick quickly not so quickly I know everybody gets shy on these things I'll share all right, thank you. Go um, so I wouldn't say it's been a couple of months, um, but before I took this position, um, I was not even, it wasn't on my radar um, mm -hmm. at all, but there were so many people within the vision, uh, one is on this call, that uh, reached out to me and just really encouraged me to um, at least apply for the position. And that was something that I wasn't, um, I wasn't aware that so many people were seeing me and kind of had that confidence in me that I could do the um, do the job. And that really kind of sat with me and it made me feel um, appreciated, it made me feel seen, it made me feel a sense of, you know, these people um, really have my back and they're confident in what I can bring to the table. So um, that was really overwhelming because I was experiencing some other things personally but that kind of helped me deal with that as well because it was um like a perfect balance of emotions going on mm -hmm. um so again just knowing that so many people were believing in me and really rooting for me um mm -hmm. and kind of I guess what happens is I am in that position currently so that's how yeah. that worked out for me 
There you go. Yeah. What was the biggest kind of thoughts you had around as even you think about it now, like what comes to mind as you think about it? Um, just my reservations that I had. Um, I knew that it would be another challenge for me to take on, of course, um, more responsibilities. Sure. Um, and then kind of moving from a position of, you know, I'm working with coworkers, but I would then become their leader, um, so to speak. So sure. that was a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Big that's always a tough, big, big change transition. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Thank you guys for sharing that. So um with this we we all can see we know probably even without these examples we all know the power of you know if we get a couple of these a week right or if we get a couple of these powerful experiences uh, a month right what a difference um that makes oh somebody talking um uh, so i'm going to share my screen here and you all click on the nifty difty hand nifty difty um handy dandy handout um that i sent and this is what i've come to find is and you can all see that um and it's on your your pdf i sent you to but this is what i've come to find are the five key stages to really build, I would say, yourself as a leader. And when, when you talk about that intentional influence, these are things that you can do individually to kind of build your sphere and your influence and the people that you interact with, but then also what it looks like on a larger scale scale for your team. And so I'm just gonna kind of walk through these key areas and I kind of did as well in the examples I gave you to questions to think about. But the first thing that happens for all of us is we have an experience, right? And this happens from the minute you're hired to onboarding, right? To the next meeting upon meeting, upon email, upon all day long, even right now, right? You're having an experience with me that you're either like, right away it's producing producing an emotion in you that's like, uh, she's a bit annoying, right? Or her voice is a bit, you know, oh, it's kind of weird voice, right? Or, um, oh man, this is really interesting and engage, engaging. Like all these things are happening every time you have these experiences and you're ha ha having them and producing them all day long, right? We could have just unpacked your whole morning and said, tell me about the experiences you had this morning. And when I say experiences, basically what I mean is your connection points with other people among your team, on, on your team. So again, it can be text, it can be email, it can be through MSN team. It can be, uh, of course, meetings are the biggest place we have these experiences. And the big question that I always want to ask is, are your experiences a place where not only you do you connect, but you feel seen, you feel heard, you feel valued? Not only do you feel that, but are you giving, hopefully, right, that experience to the people around you? So scale of one to 10, I want you to kind of rate your level of experiences with your team. 10 being the majority of the time, we have pretty powerful, good, engaging, connected experiences. Uh, you know, one being, uh, it's you probably need, need to look for another job <laughs> or something. Um, so one to, one to 10, rate your level of quality, impactful experiences. Then the next piece of that is to understand that every time we have an interaction, a encounter, a connection with somebody, um, good question to Megan is, um, I would say you can think about this in terms of whether you think about it, just your coworkers, just managers, um, you can do two separate columns. This is how I feel with my managers. This is how I feel with my coworkers. Or you could do the collective team um, in general. It kind of no right or wrong, whatever 
you feel is helpful. I've done this with people where they do their team and then some people do just them and their boss um, because there's all these little cultures and then there's these little subcultures uh, and, you know, we can all kind of see that. So there's a lot of different ways to to do this, whatever's most helpful for you. So within these experiences, right after we have within these experiences, these connection points, we it automatically in, a, in us produces an emotion. And you all kind of said and thought through, right, joy or happiness or gratefulness or frustration or discontent. You know, there all the different things can come up for us. And really this feeling is how we live life. We live so much more than we realize around feeling. You get home from work, spouse or whoever, your partner says, how was your day, honey, right? And oh, it was good, right? We answer in feeling. So this is a really important piece to think about um, and to think about how you can create experiences that give your team the emotions, the feelings that that you want them to. But we'll kind of get into that. The next piece is then a mindset. And this is often, these are your thoughts, the things that just come to mind in your head. And often these, we, we sometimes can be an intentional with, or we can be intentional with our thoughts. Uh, but also when you have these experiences and then it produces an emotion pretty right quickly thereafter, we have a thought about that experience. And so much of you know, if I have an experience with my boss and it's not positive and I walk away frustrated and my thought is he's never going to change, she's never going to change, then moving forward, anytime I have another experience, that thought may just kind of permeate my mind where I'm thinking she might say something or whatever, you know, c comes in, you know, in my world, some another interaction and because I've been thinking and maybe she's shown me proof he's shown me proof they're not going to change it's hard for me to see maybe even when they do change so this mindset piece is really huge to make sure we're having thoughts that align with how we want to live how we want to experience the people around us now, that doesn't mean that the reality might be my boss might not be open to change, um, but but that's a watch point that we'll maybe come back to as well. Um, but then moving forward from that, it produces these behaviors in us, these habits in us, and very closely connected to your experience is the habits that you and your team create and how you Go about your day. Every team I see, uh, and meetings are a good example of this, of what are the habits a team has in meetings. Maybe it's a habit that you don't say too much. Maybe it's a habit of that it the meeting always kind of starts on a sour note or a bit negative. Or maybe the, the habit at the end of it is that we don't have good resolution to next steps forward. So even that alone could be some homework for you to think about and to go observe what are the like consistent habits, good or bad, that you notice your team and even you as a culture kind of do, right? Anything uh, that kind of happens uh, intentionally or unintentionally can kind of create a habit. We all have a morning routine habits. And the same goes for our teams and our interactions and what that looks like. And then ultimately from there, we have our results. We have maybe high productivity, low productivity, um, a team that doesn't, a team that avoids conflict. And it all, you know, cycles, it all starts from these experiences that these connection points, these interactions are either happening in a really positive, good way, or maybe not so good way. And it all depends on the level of intentionality of the leaders. And so as I go through that, any initial questions, thoughts, 
Uh, and I'm going to kind of highlight a few as well, but just kind of want to pause and make sure uh, not missing anything with this. But does that kind of make sense uh, for for everybody? All right, head nods and a uh, silence will be agreement. Um, so two areas I initially want to emphasize is where most people focus is results. And it makes sense. We want high productivity. We want high performance. We want team connected. Those are the results, probably the goals that you might have your team. And so often we can get so focused on those that then we go quickly to, okay, well, what needs to happen, right? What, what behaviors need to happen? What, what, what needs to adjust? And although that has its time and its place and is not wrong, what I often see is more effective and what I do with, especially one-on-one -on -one with leaders that are trying to be really influential and change is to say, instead, what are the experiences you could seek to give your team that could give you those results? What experience could you seek to give your team that produces emotions of joy, of happiness, of feeling included, of feeling heard, that ultimately will naturally give them the mindset that I love working here, right? I appreciate the boss, all things that we hope is true leadership and our, of our team. And so if, if I had to kind of leave you with one or two homework assignments, it would be to think about, okay, we you probably know your results that you want and you hope for your team or the goals maybe that you have in the next three months. But then the next step I'd say is to really think specifically on what experiences could I then give my team daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, so that they're consistently, hopefully having this experience time and time again. Because again, then when I, where I see leaders uh, misstep or, or whatnot, they come back to me and they go, I did. I had that really engaging meeting and I said, awesome, right? Everybody was talking. You were talking the least. You were listening. Great, great, great. Uh, and then they come back and I say, so did you have another meeting like that? Or how, how many times did you give them that experience? They're like, well, we just had that one meeting, right? <laughs> and we all need that experience again and again and again. So I want you to think on a micro level and then on maybe a macro level, how can you give that experience time and time again? So, you know, Margaret great, gave a great example of they she had that session uh, where the team was feeling collaborative, engaged. And so now the challenge becomes where I find you maybe have that one-off meeting or two-hour meeting or even a half-day event but then the challenge becomes, how can I create that, recreate that experience within the week, within the day? So they feel it through the email. They feel it through uh, maybe a quick 10-minute catch-up call. Uh, and that becomes the real challenge is that consistency. Because anybody can do this once, twice, uh, but we got to figure out what does it look like to have this experience, create this experience consistently again and again and again. So there's that homework piece I give you. And then the second piece that kind of is same, but a little different, that kind of breaks it down at that micro level is the behaviors. And I would say specifically those habits. So what are the habits that you could seek to uh, not only create consistently, but also uh, bring others maybe into, into the fold with you. So I've seen one team, you know, they start every meeting with best thing going on in your life right now. And once a month in within that meeting, that leader also switches it up and says, hardest thing in your life right now. So it's it's positive, but also a reality of sometimes things are hard, right? So that's one way that 
that leader wants to create experience that you're more than just your work. I see you personally. I see what's going on. We take time at the beginning of every meeting to say, hey, what's going on outside of work? Tell me something I maybe don't know about you going on with your kids' baseball team right now um, or something. So it's those little habits of experience, of interaction, of maybe emails. Uh, maybe I know an HR director who, she might be on the call, um, but she checks in a text most every morning with certain people on the team, you know, her kind of key key leaders of like, hey, how's it going? It's almost almost daily. She kind of sends that, or if they're out sick, you know, she'll reference to make sure to check in. So it's those little, I would say, habits that there's things I try and do as well that I put on my calendar, right? That may seem a bit disingenuous, right? But I know it's going to come across as genuine. I just have a terrible memory and needs to be on my calendar. <laughs> Um, so those are the two things that I would go away and give you, give you, give you homework to kind of think a little deeper on. Um, but then also to, uh, encourage you to go and, and have this conversation with, with your team as well around, around these things. Uh, so with that, any, I know that's, that's kind of a lot going quickly. I know we have just a couple more minutes, but any questions, thoughts um, within this, these areas? I know I, I kind of put, um, whoops, those questions and you probably have them too, but um, yeah, any any questions? Let me check the chat. A any areas that you guys feel like you get tripped up the most within any of these things, I guess as well? No, you, you've mastered it. Um, well, I'm going to call a few of you out there and tell me. Uh, yes, Megan, obviously she mastered it. Not not surprised. Megan, you can lead the next webinar. Uh, I'll gladly take a seat. Uh, how about, i love for you, because it's, it's good to hear each other's examples. Uh, what are some experiences little things, habits that you can maybe share with all of us that either you're doing, maybe a coworker's doing that you're like, maybe we need to keep doing more of this or remembering a, a boss that used to do something that you're like, I need to start implementing that. Um, any examples you guys can share with the group that would be helpful? I know you have, I know you have them. Because usually the people on these webinars are the people that are already doing the work. <laughs> I think for me, I do start every morning um, with my management team. I always send them just that general good morning and some small piece of motivation for the day. If we have something um, going on for the day, you know, I kind of point that out and just encourage them to, you know, be engaged, ask questions, um, just kind of go all in. Or sometimes it can be just a simple, thank God we made it to Wednesday. Friday's almost here. But I do try to check in with them every morning. Um, first thing I do when I get on. And every Monday morning, I send motivation to my entire family success coach team um, with maybe just and one particular point that I reference that I would like for them to carry throughout the week to ensure that they have a, a good week. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Really good. And how's the response to that? Do you usually feel like you get a good kind of the results you get from that? Or I are think so. Good. I think um, I get some pretty good feedback. The management team is more vocal. So, you know, some of those yeah. that I that I put in our chat, yeah. I, we tend to get more of a conversation. But um, with the entire team, you know, I would get the we do it. I do it on Microsoft Teams. So I'll get the emojis, yeah. the hearts and the likes and yeah. the gifts and things like that. But I um. It's something, and I told one of my, uh, I did tell one of my management, one of the members, one of the supervisors, I was like, you know, she was like, you're so good at it. And I'm like, you know, I don't always feel like it. And I may not even always be feeling sure. the motivation right. because, right. you know, it's, it's a struggle for me sometimes. Oh, too. Yeah. I just feel like as the leader, I need to be the one to, to set the pace yeah. and to set the tone. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Well, that's a great example, too, of like if you have the kind of experience and the habits, even when you're not emotionally feeling it, you're like, no, oh, kind of like what I'm like, I don't want to go to the gym today. But I'm like, I know the results I want and I know like I'll get my butt to the gym, you know. <laughs> so that's a great that's a great point. Thank you for sharing. That's really good. Um, one of the biggest Anybody things, else? yeah, um, one of the biggest things for me in feeling like connected to someone, um, especially if they're in a management or a leadership position is when they engage with me, like as a, as like a peer, even though organizationally they're above me, but in a way where when I leave the conversation, it they didn't have another motive. <laughs> they weren't here to like, oh, I'm just engaging with you, asking how things are going. Right. I'm going to get to right. business. Like the connection is genuine uh -huh. just for the sake of connecting. Like, oh, I just stopped by to see how you're doing. Um, for for yeah. me, I always get on guard. And if it, there's like a little notebook and they go, check, checked in with Megan and go, okay. So you're just trying to <laughs> like, it's not, it's not this genuine right. thing of, you know, and I can, I can understand reminders of saying, I tried to set aside time to connect with people so that I have that space. And so this is a reminder versus something yeah. that is more of like, oh, my leader standard worksheet says that I have to talk to someone in the team today. So I'm doing that. I'm like, okay, so this is just yep. one of those to do things. So it's, you know, and I think that's the difference yeah. with coworkers, if I have one of my coworkers reach out, if I'm a little late in the morning, they're like, Hey, is everything okay? There's this genuine tone to it of like, Oh, they're mm -hmm. noticing this change. Um, versus if I do have it with someone who's just like, Oh, I noticed that you weren't there. I'm like, but you don't even know when, I, like when I generally come in. <laughs> so it's, it's like, um, there's that, um, it, I'm like, you right. were seeking something from me. And that's when Different. you noticed that I wasn't available. Not because you were like, you're always here at 9.30. Why aren't you here? Right. Um, kind of thing. And, so. okay. that, that's huge. And uh, we can, that's another thing. It's like, you know, when culture is there or not there, you know, when genuineness is, is there or not there, um, which can be sometimes a hard thing to teach if it's not there. Um but yeah, good. Um, another question came in. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see what what to do uh, if you have some toxic team members who are bringing the culture down. Cla one of those classic questions. Um, so you guys could probably an answer um, from your own experience too, or hopefully not from your own experience. Uh, but I find, I mean. Kind of two avenues I always can can take initially is one with this model as well. Why I like this model is it kind of breaks it down of like how do we intentionally build this culture and all, right off the bat, even if hopefully you don't have any toxic people in your team, but if you do, I always say go find the people who have those same like-minded values and are, you can see are doing or trying to create that same team dynamic that you are and go and, and kind of keep pushing each other, right? keep collaborating, keep, so it almost kind of silences the toxic person or it kind of just makes them almost mute in a lot of ways. Um, if everyone else is all the more, collaborating together uh it, it kind of sometimes I've seen it drives them out uh sometimes I've seen them where you're able to write them up a little quicker for attitude or performance uh and one way or another it drives them out and so to pull in more intentionally the people that are like-minded and trying to do the the things you are with this model uh, the other approach I've seen is, you know, sometimes if you have one or two kind of, uh, we'll, we'll just say toxic or, or kind of non-performers, sometimes I've seen um, it work where a leader has a conversation with one of them and, or maybe both of them even, and says, hey, I, I see you're a strong leader. You have a lot of influence. 
can we get it going in this way, right? Right now it's going in the wrong direction. Um, can we, so it almost kind of plays to their level of influence and, but we, we steer it in the right direction. Um, so not always, but sometimes I've seen that work where you can pull, pull on those leadership abilities, uh, but empower them in the right way you want, want to do, uh, want to do that. But Anybody, anybody out there have any other good, good kind of strategies for silencing the, the toxic team members? It's, it's a tough one. I guess I don't think I've done a webinar on uh, toxic. Maybe that'll be the next one. Um, definitely message me if you guys have any uh, topics you're dying to hear about. Um, but yeah, last, we'll kind of round out here. Last thoughts, questions. Uh, I know we're a little past the 30 minute mark, but thoughts, questions, things you're still like, I don't, I don't know. Where to go here. Check the good. How about a, a couple of you as we round out? Tell me what feels like your key takeaway or one or two action steps that you kind of feel like from from the five areas is your go go to or will be your thought to think more on or Megan, can I put you on the spot since you just spoke? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what feel like what do you feel like are you kind of like okay let me go away and think about this or action this out anything for you um the biggest thing had to do um with your example and how I might have been doing similar things of having an experience um where it something wasn't going the way I wanted. And with the person's contribution to that, is, am I formulating thoughts about their inability to change? Mm -hmm. Um, and am I, am I drawing to conclusions? Like how, how are, how am I letting experiences shape my thoughts and am I deviating too much from my values and how I want to perceive people and being too hard? Um, cause I think on one hand there's, um, because our brains are so good at patterns, it might be two different people who did similar things. And so I'm using that to reinforce the judgments on other people. So if like, see this person did that and that person did that when it's might've been coincidence. Um, right. But I do like patterns do have power. If you see someone doing the same thing, yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. then you're like, okay, well, <laughs> the writing's on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. But just, just, just checking in with myself of, am I falling into that trap? How might I be falling into that trap of allowing um, unfavorable experiences to shape my thoughts and then impact how, what results I'm getting and how, and how I'm behaving, um, not letting it suck me down. Um, I think is the biggest thing to always just be honest with yourself on how you're engaging with that cycle. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really good because we didn't even touch on that too much, but it's like we're all creating experiences for ourselves, which yeah. produces an emotion in us, a thought in us. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I had that with even going to my you know CrossFit that I realized like I gotta keep going consistently because I do love uh, well the results you know. Uh, but then also I love how it makes me feel after, yeah. you know, and to keep creating that again and again and again. And we all do that with work as well. So that's really, that's another homework Megan just gave you all. Um, what, we'll get one, one more, one person, one more person want to share. Um, Mar Margaret or Charlie, since you guys are, have your video videos on. I can share. Um, I think Megan just said a statement that was really powerful that patterns have power um, that spoke volumes to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, one thing that I'm going to um, intentionally try to be more consistent with 
experiences, um, making sure that um, staff are having positive experiences um, when we have meetings or just my personal one-on-one -on -one interaction with them. Just trying to make sure I keep that mm -hmm. as much as possible because sometimes you can't always make it a perfect experience, but just kind of consistently, you know, aim to right. make it a positive one. Yeah. Love it. Thank you. Well, good. Yeah. Thank you guys for, for jumping in and sharing and uh, good luck with all your homework uh, and reach out anytime questions. Uh, maybe the next one will be uh, all things toxic. Oh, that goodness. Yeah. Uh, so thank you. And we will see you all soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.